Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to use the Astra WordPress theme to make any website you need to create for any business or any other purpose with absolutely no coding needed. So we'll cover every single step in the process from start to finish. So by the end of this video, you're gonna have a really beautifully designed website like any of these or any combination of any of these that you're gonna create simply by choosing a base layout customizing it with your own elements, you know, images, text, colors, content, all that stuff. And then you can make it even more custom by dragging and dropping any element you want to include or by adding in any whole section your content needs, choosing from hundreds of pro-designed, fully customizable layout blocks. And then with just a few extra clicks, we'll make sure each page looks perfect on all your mobile devices too. And now I've created hundreds of websites like these using this exact method. It honestly couldn't be any easier and the possibilities are truly limitless. I think you're gonna forget that you ever needed a web designer or a developer to do this kind of thing for you. And in case you ever wanna to skip to a specific step, I have made chapter markers below this video down in the description for easy reference. So if you're ready, we're gonna start from the very beginning by getting you set up with a free domain name, like yourbusiness.com for instance, as well as a huge discount on the easiest, most reliable, cheapest WordPress hosting plan that I personally always use and recommend. So. To get that, you just want to go to wesmcdowell.com slash hosting to get my affiliate discount pricing on the web hosting along with that free domain name. So again, go to wesmcdowell.com slash hosting and we can get started right now. Okay, so when you follow that link, wesmcdowell.com slash hosting, you're going to end up right here. So as you can see, you've got quite a discount, $2.95 as opposed to $8.99 a month. And you've got all kinds of great stuff with Bluehost. You've got uh, expert 24-7 support. I hardly need them, but when I do, they're right there. And it's just a really easy way to get your WordPress set up. And you do get that free domain name if you need it. So I'm just going to click on Get Started. We're going to get through this pretty quickly. Okay, so now it's time to choose your plan. Basic is just fine as long as you're just creating one website. If you're a, a web designer creating multiple sites for clients and you want staging servers, then go with one of these. But if you're just a business, all you need is this $2.95 a month plan. So I'm gonna click on select. Now here's where you can either use a domain you own. So if you already have a .com you wanna use, you would just type that in here and it'll walk you through the steps of transferring it. Or if you want a brand new domain, all you need to do is see if the one you want is available. So I would just type in yourmostprofitablewebsite.com and we'll see if that's available. Click on next. All right, we are in business, it's available. So all you need to do from here is input all of your billing information, choose your account uh, plan. So basically it is cheaper the longer out you go with 36 months, but you can go down to 12 months, that's fine too. Then we have all these extras. So I like to just uncheck all of them. I don't think any of them are that necessary and I'll click on turn it off. This one, domain privacy and protection, is the only one you might consider um, that's gonna keep your name off potentially being on any spam lists, but I've actually not really encountered that, so it's up to you if you wanna keep that checked or not. And then enter in your payment information and check right here, and then click on submit. Okay, so when everything goes through, all you have to do is click on create your account. You've already got your domain name here, now you're just gonna create your password, and I'm just gonna use the the one that they got for me. I'm just gonna take note of it. I'm just gonna do a copy. Then click right here to show that you've read and agreed and then create account. Now go to login and then type in your password and then log in. I'm just gonna save it. Okay, now create your website. I'm gonna choose skip this step and I'm gonna keep choosing <laughs> saying skip this. And then I'm finally gonna choose limitless customization and they're gonna ask you a few things. What type is it? Let's just say, you know, just choose the type of your business. Or, you know, we can actually just click on skip this step. I'm gonna do that. Now here's where you wanna put in the name of your business or the name of your website. Tagline's not that important. I'm gonna skip that and click continue. We actually do not need to pick our theme here because the next step we do is gonna take care of that for us. So I'm gonna click on skip this step for now. 
They're installing WordPress. And now we're ready to actually log into WordPress where the fun can begin. So just click right over here. Okay, so we're now inside of our WordPress dashboard. Actually, if we click right here, we're actually in the dashboard uh, where you would be when you log in to WordPress each time. So a few things I wanna show you real quick before we get started. So within WordPress, the side panels where you're gonna go, this is where most of your options are. So whenever you write a blog post, for instance, you can click on posts, add new, same with pages. But the main thing I actually wanna talk about right now is users because you didn't actually choose a password for WordPress yet. So we're gonna go ahead and click on users, all users. Now, when you signed up, it did create a user account for you. So I'm just gonna click on edit and I'm gonna go down to the bottom and it allows you to put in your first name, your last name, all that stuff. The really important thing though is that it has your email correct and that it has your password. So change it to something you'll remember and then click on update profile. Then whenever you need to log back into your account, you just go to yourwebsitename.com slash WP admin. You're gonna put in your username and your password. So the only thing left before we can start building is we need to add the right plugin. So let's go over to plugins on the left side. And I just wanna do a little cleanup here. So I'm gonna click on dismiss. I'm gonna get rid of all of these annoying pop-ups. This is up to you if you wanna do it or not. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to choose all of these plugins and I'm gonna deactivate all of them and I'm gonna choose them again. And then I'm going to delete them and then click on apply. Now we're gonna add in the only plugin we actually need and that is called Starter Templates. So just type that in the search bar. And this is the one right here. It's got a, over a million installs. It's a great plugin, so I'm gonna click on Install and Activate. So what this is doing is it's getting us set up with the page builder we need as well as the theme we need, which is Astra. Now just click on See Library. And here it's gonna ask you which page builder you want. We want Elementor, it's definitely the best one. It's all I recommend. Okay, so now these are all of the website templates that we have to choose from, and there are a ton. So let me give you a little bit of advice here on how to choose. So basically, all of these have placeholder, you know, dummy images and colors. So what I don't want you to actually do is get too bogged down in what the images are and what the colors are in choosing because you're meant to change the images and the colors anyway to suit your own brand. So for instance, just because this one says pet care, if you had three different photos here that weren't of dogs, this could really be basically anything, right? And a lot of these are organized into different industries. But again, once you change the images, it can really be anything. So having said that, I do wanna make it a little easier on you in choosing. So you'll notice a lot of these say premium on them meaning you have to pay for those ones. So let's just go ahead and get rid of all the paid ones right away. Under all, we'll choose free. And now we're left with all of the free options. So, and you'll notice when you, when you click on each one, it'll pop up with a preview of the homepage and then all of the other pages it comes with as well. And remember these pages can be swapped out. You can rename them. You can put different content on them if you need to. You're not locked in to what these pages are actually say right now but let's go ahead and scroll down and find the one we wanna to use today. And it really doesn't matter which one of these you choose, you can still follow along with me and learn everything you need to know to customize any of the themes you choose. So I'm gonna choose this one to get us started. It's called Professional Services, but again, it can be for absolutely anything when you change the image and the colors and the fonts. So all I'm gonna do is go down to uh, click Import Complete Site, and it's just gonna ask you to answer you know, some basic questions and click next. And then I'm just gonna click on skip. And now it's just gonna take a few minutes to import the entire site over. Okay, so that imported successfully. We're just gonna click now on view site. So here is our base that we're starting with for the homepage. So we've got a hero section followed by, you know, basically these could be benefits or services and about us section. Um, so basically we've got all of this to work with but keep in mind, we're not locked into any of these sections. All this is really about is going section by section, customizing it for our needs and for your content. And it's really easy to add in sections, delete sections, move sections around. So whatever we end up with, it's definitely gonna serve your content the best. All right, so let's get to creating. All we're gonna do is go up to Edit with Elementor and click there. 
All right, and here we are within the Elementor dashboard. So Elementor is just a really powerful page builder that lets us design everything very visually with a drag and drop interface. So what you'll notice is we have um, our actual preview over here on the right, where we have all of our different elements or widgets. And on the left, this is where all of our widgets are kept on the sidebar. So let's say we wanted an image to go here. We would just take the image widget, drag it where we want it, and then we would click on it and bring in whatever image we want. But I'm gonna go ahead and right click delete to get rid of it. So anything that's on the right, we just can click on it and edit it on the left. And anything on the left, we can drag over to the stage on the right. It's pretty simple and it's gonna get a whole lot simpler as we go. You're gonna definitely get the hang of this pretty quick. So I wanna talk about fonts for a second. So let's say you have a font you know you wanna use or a couple, what we could do it's a little harder is we can actually, or more tedious I should say, we can go piece by piece, click each instance of the font and then change it over under style, under typography, or we can make this a whole lot easier and just change the base level fonts site-wide right now. So what we wanna do to do that is go up to this little hamburger menu icon at the top left and then go to site settings. Now here we're gonna go to typography and we basically have these set up in different sections. So body would refer to any kind of just body font, just normal right here, paragraph font. So we can set that. And then here's where it gets a little more technical. You may or may not know this. Headings have a hierarchy from H1, which is usually always the, the big headline on a page, to H2, which is one that's slightly smaller. And then these would probably be H3s because they're a sub headline under this one. So. Basically, you can change all of them. What I like to do is I like to choose a headline font and a body font. And then I just put the same headline font in everything from H1 down to H4. But in this case, I'm gonna make it really easy. I'm just gonna go with one overall font for the entire site. So let's start with body and just click under typography and under family, here's where you can choose what font you wanna use. And here's where I need to let you know, you have access to thousands of Google fonts. So if you just do a search for Google fonts, take a look, there's so many to choose from. You truly can create any look you're going after, but I'm gonna make it really easy with a really nice font that I like to use called Poppins. We're gonna use that for the body as well as for all of our headings too. So under H1, I'm gonna click on typography and we'll type in Poppins as well and you can see it changed this H1. One thing I do wanna do though, I think I don't like how thin it is there. I'm gonna bump up the weight a bit. Let's see what it looks like. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll do the same thing under H2 through four. So really quickly, let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, and as you can see, that's kind of taking care of all of the fonts on the page so far. So now it's time to actually customize our page. So all we need to do is click the X. Oh, really important point here. We need to save our changes. So always click right down here. It'll say update. So we always want to do that. Okay, so starting at the top with our hero section, let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to edit text and this image and the background and the buttons. So one by one, let's start with the text. We're just going to click it and then go over to content on the left side. And here's where we would just change our headline to whatever we wanted it to be. You know, we could say, take control of your website. Now let's say we wanted to change the color of that text. So you would just go from content to style and then under text color, just click right here. And from here, you can basically drag this around anywhere you want it. And then you slide the color slider. You know, if you wanted some kind of a blue, you can do that and just kind of play around with, with it till you get it how you want but I do have a color picked out already. So if you have a color code, you would just type that in right there. And then anytime you wanna save a color, because trust me, you don't wanna just keep track of them on, on sticky notes all over your desk. So what you, all you need to do is click on the plus icon once you've got your color picked out, and that's gonna save it for you. So you can either just kind of leave it like this, new global color. I like to name them just to let me know what it is I'm looking for. So I'll just call this like accent blue and then create. And if you needed to change anything about this, the size, uh, the, the line height between the two lines, anything like that, you would just go under typography, size is controlled here. I feel like something like that looks pretty good. And then line height, if you want, if, if it looked too spacious for you, 
or too tight for you, you can always change it right here. So I think something like that looks pretty good. Now let's talk about what if this is missing something? What if it doesn't have an element that you need? So really easy to add anything. Again, we just go up to the grid here for our, all of our widgets. And I'm gonna drag a text editor because I think what, we, what we're missing here is just a good sub headline. So I'm gonna take text editor, drag it right underneath our headline, and then you would just change it here. You know, just like that. And then if we wanted to center it, we would just go to style and alignment center. Awesome, now what about this button? So there's a few things we can do. We can obviously change the text, we can change where it links to, as well as the style of it. So if we wanted to click that, we can change the text right here. I'm just gonna leave it as, as is though. Here's where you would control the link. So you would type in the web address of where it's gonna link to. But now let's talk about the style, meaning the color. So uh, we go up to style and we can obviously change the font here if we wanted to do that. We can change the text color. Let's go ahead and make that white. And then let's go ahead and change the background color. So obviously for the background type, you could do a gradient if you wanted to, but let's just keep it on classic solid and then choose our color. Again, you can drag this around anywhere you want to, but I'm going to type in a color code I already have picked out, and then I'm gonna save it by clicking on the plus sign. And let's call it button color and then create. Now let's talk about probably the most impactful part of this that's gonna change the look of it the most, and that's the image. So all we need to do here is just click on it, and then under content, we're gonna click on choose image. Now you've got a few choices here. So if you've got photos picked out already, all you need to do is drag the file into the window here, or you can actually have access to thousands of free stock images from Pixabay if you click up here. And they always get stretched out for some reason. They don't actually look like that when you put them in, but you can do a little search, you know, happy people or whatever, and find something you like, and just click on insert media and go from there. But I've actually got one picked out, so all we need to do is drag the file right into our window and then click on insert media. All right, there we go. Now there are a few more things we could do here if we wanted. What if we wanna change the background color here? What we need to do is choose this column because the, the background color is, is uh, specified by this column. Then we go over to style and then under background type, classic, I'm just gonna choose color here and I'm gonna type in the color code of just a nice beige that I think looks good nice and neutral. And now what if we wanted to change uh, how big these columns are? What if we wanted the image to be slightly bigger and this to be a little smaller? All we need to do is hover over that dotted line between the columns and we just drag it to however it looks good to us. I think something like that looks pretty nice. And let's just do a little cleanup over here. There's a few things. This is too close. This text is too close to the sides. There's too much space between the headline and subheadline and there's too much space between the subheadline and the button. So I'll show you how to take care of all that stuff. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding inside of this column. That's gonna give it more space between the sides here. So choose the column itself. Then we're gonna go to advanced under padding. So any time, if we type in any number here, it's gonna give it to us on all sides, including top and bottom. We don't necessarily need that. So let's go ahead and uh, zero that back out. I'm gonna unlink the values so it's all independent of each other. So I'm gonna do 50 on the right and 50 on the left. Now I'm gonna do something similar to get there are spacing just right between all these elements. So I'm gonna click this headline and I'm gonna to go to advanced. And this time I'm gonna do margin. The margin just dictates how much space there is between the outside of an element and the next element. So I'm gonna unlink the values and I'm gonna lower the margin on the bottom to where it's closer and it looks better. There we go. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the subheadline. go to advanced, unlink the margins, and then bottom. All right, now that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and collapse this sidebar so we can really see what we're dealing with here. All right, so I think it's looking pretty good so far. I think it's time to move on to our next section. So by the way, as we go, it really is important to understand you're not locked into any of these sections. If this section does not fit your content in any way, we can add a new one and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. 
So if you didn't like this, you would just click on the X and you would remove it completely and start with something new. So stick with me and I'll show you how to add a new section. But for now, let's go ahead and customize this one so you can really get a sense of how that works. So first things first, obviously if we wanted to change this text, we would click on it and change it over here. And for this element, so this is what we call a compound element. So if you click on it, you'll notice it has a title and then it has a description underneath it and it's all controlled in one element. So we would change the, the headline here. Let's say these were you know three benefits of working with you. You would name the benefit and then you would do a brief description of it right here. This could also work for services. So if you had three services you offered, but let's say we were missing an image on these. So actually these are image boxes now that I see that. So all we need to do is if we wanted to add an image to each of these to kind of bring it to life more visually, all we need to do is choose each one and then go over to content, choose image, and then you would upload whatever image you wanted to use. I'll just use one here and click on insert. And right now the image position is set to the left. Let's make it on top. Let's uh, give it a little bit more visual punch. So I'm gonna click on top and you can see how small it is. So let's go ahead and make it the full width here. We would just need to go up to style and then width percent. So it's set to 30%. That's why it's so small, 30% of the width. So let's just take it all the way up to 100% and see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll do the same thing for the other two. I'm gonna click there, choose the image, insert media. Oh, and one thing it's important to know, we've already set the style here to make this full width and on top. If we want to apply that really easily to our other two, all we need to do is right click, copy, and then go over here, left click, paste style, or right click, paste style. And I'll do the same thing over here. And then I'll go ahead and add that image in. And obviously you can change that button. We already know how to do that. Or if we don't need it at all, we'll right click and delete. Now for the background. So let's click on the entire section with these six dots and then go up to style. And you've got choices here. You can do a solid color, which is what we have. You could do a gradient background and you can choose which colors they are. You could even do a video, which is pretty cool in the right circumstances. We'll get to that later. Or you could do a slideshow. But for now, let's be uh, just super classic and we'll click on classic and we can choose any color we want to. But I'm gonna go back to uh, the blue color that I already chose for our headline up here. It's nice and neutral, it's all purpose. So I'm gonna click on the custom icon, it looks like a globe, and that brings up all of our saved colors, and I named it accent blue, so I'll click on that. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. So now let's go down to our next section. And if, of course, if you didn't want it, you would click on the X and we'd get rid of it. But let's just work with what we've got here and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna get rid of this about us text. I don't think we need this little kind of super headline above this headline. So I'm gonna right click, delete. And then you just obviously change this text by clicking on it. And then over here, title and description, you would change the title here, description here. If you wanna change the image, you click on that, choose image, and then just bring over whichever one you want. I'm just gonna click on this one. And then scrolling down, so let's say we didn't want another image here. Let's say you had a really great video and you wanted to use that instead. So let's just go ahead and right click delete on this image. And let's go back up to our widgets with this, uh, this grid. So you could bring over all kinds of things. You could bring over a form, a Google map, another text editor and a headline if you wanted to. But I said video, so let's bring over one of those. Let's just drag and drop it right into place. So then of course you'd actually wanna put your own video in there. So what you would have to have done first is uploaded that to YouTube or Vimeo. You generally don't ever wanna self host your own video on your website. It's gonna to take too long to load um, and people generally just won't put up with that. So um, once you've dragged the widget over, just click on the little pencil icon here and then choose where the source is, either it's YouTube or Vimeo. Um, I've never used Dailymotion, but YouTube is generally best, especially for SEO. And then you're just gonna paste in the link to that video right there. And then if we wanna get rid of this little watch on YouTube band, we would just go under player controls and click on hide for that. And obviously you would change our text over here, like so, and over here, like so. And of course you can change the color. So let's say we wanted our headline here and here actually to be that blue color that we chose. So we would click on the whole section, go up to style, under content, not image, under content, 
Under title, we would choose our global color, our accent blue. And then I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Style, content, under title, color, accent blue. Cool, now I'm seeing here it has these kind of four bullet points basically without bullet points. So, so it gives me an idea. I actually wanna do an icon list here. So it would have an icon followed by the bullet point. So I'm going to delete each of these and I'm gonna drag in a new widget. I'm gonna go up to the grid. I'm gonna type in icon and we're looking for icon list. So I'm gonna take over that and I'm gonna drag it right to where those things I just deleted are. This just lets us have a bullet list in a more visual way. So I'm gonna click on each one. I'm gonna put in our text and then I'm going to choose the right icon. So we just go under icon library and you just have to do, you have to really search sometimes Sometimes things are not labeled as you would want them to be labeled. Let's go choose a cocktail, why not? Insert. Then we're gonna do the same thing for our other list items as well. So let's tackle these one by one. And then if you need to add one, you obviously just click on add item and you would add the next one. Okay, so we've got all of them typed out. Now we just have to kind of style it because these icons are very small. We would just go up to style. Let's go down to icon first and we'll get the size of those right, whatever size we want them to be. And something like that looks pretty good. Then we can make the text larger as well under typography. I think that looks pretty good. We can make the text a little further over from the icons, which is a good idea, as well as I think we want to give a little bit more vertical space between each of these two. So we'll go to list, space between. That looks pretty good to me. And now I just want to change the color of these icons. So let's go back to icon, color. I'm going to choose our accent blue. And let's say we wanted to add a call to action button here. We could either go to the widgets and we can drag the button into place. Or all we would need to do is go up to the one on top, right click, copy, I'm just gonna delete this one, right click, delete. I'm just gonna do a right click, paste. And then if we wanted to left justify, we would just go under alignment and do that. All right, so let's see what we've got so far. All right, so now let's move on to our next section, which is testimonials. So the first thing I would do here is probably just get rid of these down here, we don't need them. So whenever we delete something, we just click on the X or we can right click, delete. I'll change the text by clicking on it and then over here, and then style, I'm gonna change the color of it to our accent blue. And then for our actual testimonials, we would just click on them, change the text over here, change the, the image by clicking here, and then you would drag the real person's you know, face right into there and change their name right here. You can even give them a title, like if you wanted to say their job title or the city they're in. But what I like to do usually is actually add in five emojis of stars to make it really read like a five star review. If you wanted to do that, you would just do a Google search for web emoji stars and then just copy them and paste them. So then you just do that one by one over here for the rest of them. Of course, changing the text and their name and the image as well. And now let's change the background. Let's just do it the same beige color we had before, so we'll click the entire section, go up to style, and then we actually forgot to uh, save that color, so I'm gonna go back up. I'm gonna go here and go under style. I'm gonna get our color code, and I'm actually just gonna click on the plus. I'm just gonna name it beige background. Create. And then we can go back down and apply it. Looking pretty good. So now, remember I told you we were going to, I was gonna show you how to add a section from scratch. So there are a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna show you both. So the easiest way is to just click on the starter templates icon, or if you needed to add a section between sections, the way you would do that is you would click on the plus icon, and then you can put something between this section and this section. But I'm gonna X out of there. 
And I'm just gonna go back down to the bottom and I'm gonna show you how to do one from a block, from a template. So click on the starter templates icon and then go over to blocks, not pages. And here we've got all these pre-laid out section blocks. And the reason I like these is because they're pretty well thought out in terms of responsiveness as well. So there's gonna be very little work to do when it comes time to really making those tweaks to make sure they work on your on mobile devices as well. And you can search these out by category. If you want an about section or a team section or a testimonial section, you can just choose whatever it is you think is gonna fit your content the best. But the other way that you can add a section, and I, I'm gonna actually show you how to do it this way because we, we already know how to customize a pre-built section. So the, the other thing you can do is if nothing really fits your needs, just click on the plus icon, you choose how many columns you want it to be, and don't worry, you can always add or delete columns after the fact, you're not locked into it. I'm just gonna choose one, and then from here, we just start dragging elements into place and then customizing. So we go up to the grid, I'm gonna drag in a heading, and a button. This is just gonna be a nice call to action section. So before we start styling the elements within it, let's actually give it a background and so we know what we're dealing with in terms of space. So we wanna click the entire section, go over to style, and remember we can do background, we can do a classic color, solid color, a gradient, but I wanna show you now how to do a video background because it's actually pretty cool, it sets a good tone. So I'm gonna click on video, and all you need to do is type in the link for a YouTube video. Now, important to note, this can be a video that you made, or it can actually be somebody else's video that you found a good clip within it of. And yes, if I know you're thinking it, you are legally allowed to use other people's YouTube videos because it's part of YouTube service. When you upload a video to YouTube, it's pretty much a common license at that point. So I found one that I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna type in the link right there. And now what we're seeing here is it's playing the entire video from start to finish. Let's say all you want is like a 15 second clip within that video. You can actually specify the start time and the end time right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and specify between 16 and 40 seconds because I've identified that as a pretty nice clip we can use. But obviously this does not look great yet. So we still have some work to do. The first thing is I want to put an overlay color over this, this video so it's not so uh, colorful. So I'm going to go ahead and just collapse background and go to background overlay. And again, you can choose from a solid color or a gradient. I think it's always best just to do classic solid. There's less to mess up that way. And I'm going to choose our accent blue. And we can bump up the opacity if you go all the way up. It's completely solid. If you go all the way down, it's completely transparent. So I think something around 85 is gonna look good. Okay, yeah, it just knocks it back a bit. And of course, now we need to change the color of our text to white, go up to style, text color. I'm just gonna choose solid white. While we're at it, I'll change the content. And I'm going to align it into the center. And for our button, I'm gonna copy the style of our button up top. So I'm gonna to right click, copy, right click, paste style. And of course we can change the text of the button. So if we didn't want it to say click here, we just change it right there. And now the one thing that's kind of bugging me about this is there's not enough space on the top and bottom. So the way we fix that is we click on the entire section, we go up to advanced, and remember we're dealing with padding at this point. We want padding between the internal elements and the, the borders of the section. So I'm going to unlink the values. Let's see what 50 looks like on top and 50 on bottom. All right, so now if we collapse the sidebar, we can see what we're really working with. And by the way, this element down here, this is part of the footer, so we'll have to address that later. Um, when we get to the header and footer. But for now, let's see what we've got from the home page, And we're also gonna tackle the header later on in this video too. So scrolling down, we've got all these nice sections that fit very well together. It all feels nice and cohesive. And I hope by now you can see how easy it is to customize any single piece of content you need and just drag and drop it into place. But now it's time to go on to our next page. But before we do that, we do have to update, we have to save all of our changes, so just click on update. And if we wanna to go to our next page, the easiest way to do that 
is just to click this preview changes little icon. It's an eyeball down here. It's going to open up our page and then we can go on to our next page in our main navigation. So let's go to services and now it's time to customize this page. So all we do is go up to edit with Elementor. Okay, and this should look very familiar to you. It's our same interface with Elementor, same stage on the right, same panel on the left. So let's just get to customizing this. And obviously if you wanted to change this text, if, even if we wanted this not to be a services page at all, we would just change the name of it over here. I'm gonna go ahead and under style, text color, I'm gonna choose our accent blue. I'm gonna change the background color here to our beige. And of course, I'm gonna change our image here. So just click on it. And then under choose image, we drag whatever image you want under the window or use it from Pixabay, free images. But I've already got one here, so I'm gonna click on insert media. And let's say you didn't like this layout though. Let's say you, you didn't want this image over here. You could right click, delete it. I'm just gonna do that, right click, delete. And then you could go up here and under background, if you could change the color to whatever you want, or you could add an image as a background. And then, you know, you would just size it to cover the entire window so it doesn't repeat. And then under position, you could go to custom and you could drag it around to show whatever part of the image you wanted it to show. And then you just change the color to fit, but we're gonna go back. So anytime you wanna go back in time and redo something, just go down to history and then just go back to uh, the step where you left off. So this is where we left off. We're just gonna continue with this. I just showed that to you so you can see how customizable all these templates really are. So let's say we don't want this section at all. This doesn't really serve our content. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the X to get rid of it. And now we're gonna add our own section from scratch that's gonna show, let's say we have four different services that we all wanna show in a four column layout. So I'm gonna click on starter templates under blocks, and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna look under services and see if there's anything that stands out here. And I'm just gonna search for what I'm looking for. Okay, so this one I feel like would probably be really good. So I'm gonna click on that, import block. Okay, so that's pretty cool, I think. So first things first, we don't need our services repeated twice. So I'm just gonna right click, delete, and right click, delete on that as well. And let's say we wanted a bit more space between this image and our, our service boxes here. All we would need to do is choose the section, go up to advanced, and we can either bump up the padding or the margin in this case. So I'm just gonna do that to where it looks a little more, it just has, it gives it a little bit more breathing room, which is always nice in design. Okay, so what we have here are four different icon boxes. It's another compound widget, which has the icon, the title, and the description all in one single element. So let's say I wanted to give the icons a color and I wanted to make this text a little smaller. So first of all, you would obviously put in all of your, your text in these boxes over here. You would choose your icons by clicking on icon library and just choosing whichever one fits your content the best. But then from there, let's go to style. Then let's tackle the icon first. So let's say we wanted it to be uh, more of a color. We would just click on this, choose whatever color we want. I might choose um, this kind of red color we've already chosen for the site. And if we wanted it to be a little bit bigger, we can do it like that. And now to change the text, we have to go under content and I'll change our title color to our accent blue. I'll go under typography because I, I think I want it to be a little smaller. The text feels a bit large to me. Something like that definitely feels better. And if you ever wanted to change the description, you could go under uh, typography and let's say you wanted to make that slightly smaller too. Let's make it 18, which is actually bigger. Let's see what we got. I think that looks nice at 16. Okay, so once you have it looking the way you want it, we can apply that to all three other boxes. All we need to do is right click, copy, right click, paste style, paste style, paste style. Now let's go ahead and add in another section as well, just so you really get the hang of it. So let's click on uh, starter templates icon, blocks, and I'm gonna look for a statistics box. 
you know, you see these on websites a lot showing basically like how many projects you've completed or awards received, that kind of thing. So you would just choose one that stands out to you that fits your content best. Since we already have a light section, I'm going to go for a dark one. I'm going to click here, import block, and then you would just go piece by piece and you would change the text. You know, maybe you have 76 and then you could change projects completed to whatever you wanted it to be and obviously change the icon like this and then click on insert and you would change the style. You know, we've been doing this all along, so you know by now how to change the colors of the icons and change the text and all that good stuff. Right now I'm just gonna change the background color, go up to style and accent blue. All right, so let's check out our services page so far. Looking pretty good. So uh, it's time to go on to our next page. So again, we're gonna click on update and then the preview changes button, the little eyeball icon and then click on About Us, our next page, and then Edit with Elementor. All right, so back in the Elementor editor. So again, you just change the text here for the top of the page if you need to over here. Style, let's go ahead and give it the right color. Give the background the right color. Click on the section, Style, Color Beige Background, and then of course click on the image, and we'll go to Choose Image and we'll use whatever one we need to. All right, so now we'll go down to the next section. So again, maybe this is gonna fit your content the best, maybe not. Maybe you need to get rid of an image, maybe you need to put a video. By now, you should know how to get rid of a section by clicking the X and then adding a new one by clicking this and then just adding in whatever content you need and customizing it. So we're just gonna go ahead and customize this section. So let's say we don't need this headline, we're just gonna right click delete. We're gonna change out the image here. And it looks like this is set up as a compound widget. So it has the image and the title as a kind of a headline and then the description over here. So it's all done in one element. So let's click on choose image and use a different one that we wanna use. And let's say we wanted to you know, make maybe make this text a little less bold. I'm just gonna go up to style and under content, Title, I'm gonna do typography, and under weight, I'm gonna see what maybe 300 looks like. Hmm, I think that looks pretty good. But the point is you can make it, you know, look however you need it to look for you. And let's say we wanted to keep, you know, these kind of sections, our mission, our vision, you could do that, or you could right-click delete, right-click delete, and add something new if you needed to. I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly customize this. Let's say our mission, and let's say our experience. and I'm gonna style these a bit differently. I'm just gonna make them less bold. So I'm gonna go under content, title, typography. Let's give it a weight of 300. And then I'm gonna right click copy and then right click paste style to carry that over over here as well. Now our next section is our team section. So we can obviously customize each of these with our own image, our own uh, headline, title, and description. But let's say you wanted this to be a four column layout. All you would do is right click duplicate and that'll give you another one to work with. And let's say you needed like two lines of this. You would just go up here, right click duplicate. And then that gives you another whole line of it. You would just click here, you'd go up to advanced. You'd give it a bit of a top margin to kind of get it to set off, set apart from the line above it. So obviously it's very customizable. And then you could even delete this column and have you know four columns followed by three columns, super customizable. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete that section and I'm gonna delete this column as well because we don't actually need it. So let's just start with uh, giving this our own background color. So choose the entire section, go to style. And again, this could be a video background or a gradient, but I'm just gonna choose our accent blue color. We can change the text over here and we can change the image by clicking this, choose image. We can change the person's name over here. We can change their title. Uh, the one thing I'm noticing is this is not one of our fonts that we chose. So I'm gonna click that, go up to style, under typography. Remember we chose the font Poppins is what we were using. So always be on the lookout for any kind of stray fonts that weren't changed. You always want things to look nice and cohesive. So um, one thing I hope, so I'm gonna go ahead and Copy that, paste style, 
and paste style so it's nice and consistent. But what if you wanted to have their social profiles listed under each person's bio? So for that, there's a widget. So we just go up to uh, the grid. I'm gonna type in social and we have social icons. So that's one we can just drag right underneath the text block here. And we're just out of the box. It's gonna give us these three, but you can change each one. You can click on Facebook. Um, we could go to the icon library. You could do Dribbble or LinkedIn, Pinterest, anything like that. And then you just, just, I'll just click on LinkedIn and insert that. And then you would just link to their specific bio right here. And then here's something interesting. So you can either choose official color, meaning you know it's the official blue of Twitter, the official red of YouTube, or you can have more control over that and make it blend in with your site more. So you can click on custom, and I believe primary color is, yeah, it's the background color, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna choose white, but then I'm gonna take the transparency down to about there. So it kind of blends in nicely. But you'll notice that only took place on the LinkedIn button. It didn't take place on all of them. So what we actually needed, what we want to do is go up to style and then icon color, we'll do custom and we'll make that change from here. So I'm going to choose white and then bring this down to where it looks good. Then from there, we just need, uh, let's go ahead and left justify it. And let's make the spacing between them a little bit more too. And while we're at it, I think they're too big. So I think that size is nice. I think the spacing is good. Now we need to go to content and align it to the left. Cool, looking good. So now we just wanna right click copy, right click paste, right click paste. And then you just go for each person and you would you know change whatever profiles they need or you can actually add an item too. So let's add LinkedIn to her and then click on insert. And then you would just choose, you know, change the links one by one for each person. All right, let's take a look at our work. It's looking pretty nice, I think. Okay, so now it's time to move on to contact us. Before we do, we of course need to click on update to save all of our changes. And then we wanna click on preview changes. Then we click on contact us and edit with Elementor. Okay, so in terms of our contact us page, I think we don't need any of this stuff up top because the last thing we ever want is to distract people when they've come to our the page where they're supposed to do what we actually want them to do, which is to get in touch with us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start completely fresh here. I'm going to get rid of the top section as well as this section. So obviously it's very easy to add in whatever content we need to. So I'm just gonna click on the starter templates icon, go over to blocks, and I'm gonna filter this by, I'm gonna look for contact blocks and that's it. So I'm just gonna find something really simple. Let's take a look at our options. A lot of these have maps on them for some reason. I think that's not always necessary unless people are coming into your actual location. All right, so I'm gonna go with this one. I think that's gonna serve our needs the best. I'm gonna click on import block. Okay, so obviously we've got some work to do here. Let's just go section by section. Let's start with the the actual contact form because nothing is showing up. So basically all you need to do is click on that and then under form, you're just gonna choose simple contact form. And now we can edit all this later, but we actually do not edit the contact form inside of Elementor. We have to go to a different place to do that. So we're gonna get the rest of the page looking the way we want it. And then we'll go uh, style this form and make sure that it works meaning it actually sends something off to your email. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start with our background color. I'm gonna go up here, go to style, and I'm gonna choose our beige background. I'm gonna choose our headline, and I'm gonna just type in just a simple message. What can we help you with? I'll go up to style, text color, accent blue. I don't think we need any of these links here, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click delete. And I'm gonna get rid of this supporting subheading as well. We don't need that either. But what I think I do want is a little, just simple line that tells people what they can expect after they filled out the form. So let's go back up to our widgets. I'm gonna grab a text editor widget and drag it right under here. And I would type in something like, you 
you know, something like that, something simple. And then what if we wanted to put an icon on top, on top of this just for some visual punch? So we'd go over to uh, our widgets and I'm gonna grab an icon and drag it right on top. And I'm gonna choose something that kind of has to do with email. I'll look for envelope. A lot of times these, these icons are not listed under what you might think they'd be listed under. So for instance, we have to do envelope. We can't just say email or mail. So I'm gonna choose that one, insert. I'm gonna align it to the left because everything else is aligned to the left. I'm gonna go to style. I think I'm gonna make it slightly bigger, something like that. And then under color, let's make it our red color we've been using. And now let's say we're not happy with it all being aligned on top. We want this to be aligned in the center. It's just something good to know how to do. So the way we would do that is we choose this whole section and under layout, we can say vertical align middle, and that's gonna help it just center it vertically on the page. Okay, so one thing we can do here while we're still in Elementor before we get editing on this actual form is we can change the button color, but we don't do it in the way you might expect. We can't really do it over here anywhere. There's no style section. So what we actually have to do, let's click on update first to make sure we save everything. Then we're gonna go up to this hamburger icon, site settings, and we're gonna go over to buttons. And here is where we're gonna choose our color. So we choose the background color and our text color, we'll choose white. And now it at least looks the way we want it to look. So um, again, I'm gonna click on update. And now we're gonna click on the X. And we're gonna go back out to our WordPress dashboard. So click on that again, and then exit to dashboard. Now we're gonna open up our WordPress menu on the left, so click on that icon right up here. And now go down to WP Forms, All Forms. We'll choose our simple contact form. Now here's where we can edit what actually, what information you're actually asking for. So you can click on each one of these. You can uncheck that it's required or not. You can add a new field, just go to add fields. And let's say you wanted something with like a drop down. you wanted to ask people what their budget is and you were giving them options. You would just take that and you would drag it over where you want it. And then you click inside of it to edit it. So you would say something like, what's your budget? And then something like that and then you could make that required if you wanted to, but we're gonna actually get rid of that. Just click on the trash can icon to get rid of it. And we're gonna get rid of subject as well. We don't need that, so we're gonna click on the trash can. And then under your message, here's what I wanna do. I wanna actually change what it says in here to something different. So it's actually not done with label. That's gonna give it a label above it. So we're gonna go down to advanced options and under placeholder text, I'm gonna say, something like that. But now we need to make sure that this thing actually sends an email to you. So keep, look at, take a look at what we've got here. We have a name field and an email field that people are filling out. So remember that. Now we go to, over to settings and then under notifications. The notification refers to the email that this form sends to you. So what you wanna do is put in your email address here. And this is the subject line that's gonna come through. So you might name it something like, new website inquiry, and from name. So if you want it to come from the person's name who actually sent it to you, you can click on show smart tags and then click on name and get rid of professional services. We don't need that. So that's the field ID of the name field. And then from email, this one's a little confusing, but it's actually your email address again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. And then reply to, and then this is gonna be the email field that the person filled out so you can reply directly to them. So this is looking good to go. This is exactly how we need it. So now we're gonna just click on save and then we just X out and we're gonna go back over to pages and we're gonna go back to our home page, and we're gonna click on edit with Elementor for the home page. So we are gonna add a blog to the site in case you need one, but before we do that, I do wanna take care of something that you will always need, regardless of if you need a blog or not, and that is we need to make sure that this website looks as good as possible, not only on desktop, but on mobile devices as well. 
and Elementor makes it really easy. And what makes it even better is the themes that we chose, like the little section blocks, they've already worked out most of that for us. So what we really need to do is just give it a reality check and make a few tweaks here and there. So the way we do it is from Elementor, from within the dashboard here, we need to go down to this little responsive mode icon. It's like, it shows a little tiny mobile phone and a desktop computer. So I'm gonna click on that. And now it's gonna give us our first look at the site on mobile. So, and important to know, if you ever want a real true view look at it, we're gonna have to collapse this because there's a few things that kind of show up when this is out for some reason. So when we look at it, we just wanna look for any glaring errors, anything that doesn't look right. But most of this actually looks pretty good. The only section I can see that we need that needs help is probably this top section here. So uh, all we would need to do, let's just bring back our side panel. For instance, I feel like this text is way too big on mobile. So I'm going to click on edit and then style and then go to typography. And you'll notice anything that has the little mobile icon next to it means you are only controlling the styling on mobile. Meaning if we make it smaller, the desktop size has not changed. We've only made the change on mobile. But then things like weight, where we're choosing if it's bold or not, that is going to be a global change. It'll take place from desktop to mobile. So you always wanna look out for that little icon to make sure you're not doing any, uh, any damage to what you've already done. But other than that, I do think that this page looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any more errors that we need to fix. So if you did, you would just go piece by piece, you would click on it, you would go to style, and you would make whatever little tweaks you need to make to make it look as good as possible. So I'm gonna click on update, and then you would just wanna do this same thing for all of the rest of your pages. Okay, but now let's swap out of responsive mode. So you've already gone through all your pages and you've made sure they look good on your devices. Now, let's say you wanted to add a blog page to your website. Well, we need to go back out to WordPress to do this. So I'm gonna click on exit to dashboard. And then once again on the WordPress icon. So to start with, we need a few more plugins. Now remember plugins are just um, little pieces of code that basically extend the functionality of your website. So in the free version of Elementor, you're not allowed to make blog posts. It's really clunky, so we need to add something new to help us do that. So under plugins, I'm gonna to go to add new, and I'm going to look for premium add-ons for Elementor, and it's this one right here. So I'm gonna click on install now, and then on activate. Okay, so first things first, before we can actually style our blog page, um, we need to have a few blog posts all ready to go so we can see what we're doing, because if we don't have any blog posts, there's nothing, there's not gonna be any content there for us to style. So what we wanna do is go over to posts and then we'll go to all posts. Whenever you do a new WordPress install, it always comes with this very first blog post called Hello World. All I'm gonna do for our uh, building purposes here is I'm gonna click on PA duplicate and then I'm gonna do that one more time. So it's basically giving us three dummy blog posts that we can work with. So I'm just gonna go on these other two, do quick edit, and I'm gonna make sure that it is published, update, and one more time with this one, quick edit, published, update. And I'm gonna give each of these an image, so just click on the first one, go over to featured image, set featured image, and you can really use any image here. We are literally just doing this um, to, to see what it's gonna look like, so I'm gonna click this one, update, and then we're gonna go back, we're gonna click the WordPress icon. We're gonna do the same thing for the other two as well. I'll choose this one, update, and back. Okay, now we're finished. We've got three dummy posts that we can at least see what we're doing with. Okay, so time to create our blog section for the site. So click back on the WordPress icon. Now we're gonna go down to pages. What we need to do is basically just duplicate one of our existing pages that we so we have something that we're working with. So I'm just gonna go to About Us. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna click on PA Duplicate. And then I'm gonna go to Quick Edit for the new duplicated page. I'm gonna rename this Blog and Status Published. Update. And now Edit with Elementor. 
So this is going to be our new uh, blog page. It's gonna have all of our listings of our latest blogs. So first off, I think we don't need this image because we're gonna have other images down here. So I'm gonna right click, delete, and I'm gonna rename this. I'm just gonna click here and over on the left, I'm gonna write in latest and greatest, or you, you know, you could just say blog, whatever you wanted to say. And if it's, it, it went on a couple lines here, so I'm just gonna drag this over to make it stay on one line. And then I'm gonna just delete everything else on the page. Click on the X for all the other sections. Now all we need to do is click on the plus sign, one column, and we're gonna go up to our widgets. And I'm gonna collapse all these till we get to our premium add-ons. So basically when we added that new plugin we just added, we have access to all these new widgets that we didn't have before, one of them being premium blog. So I'm gonna take that widget and drag it right on in to our new section. Okay, so you can see we have all three of our blog, dummy blog posts that we just created in here. So now we just need to customize the look of this because right now it looks kind of sloppy, right? So first thing, I wanna give this a little bit more padding between the top bar and where we get to our blog post. So remember, we just choose the section, we go up to advanced, and in this case, again, we can either do margin or padding. I'm just gonna do margin. I'm gonna see what 50 looks like. I may go with 75. I can deal with that. I think that looks pretty good. So now we need to actually focus on uh, our content block here for our blog post. This is one widget right here. Remember, we dragged one widget over and it gets populated with all of our posts. So you've got some choices here. Under general, under content, we can choose um, from classic to modern to cards to on the side or banner. And of course, within any of those, we have full control over you know the colors and the fonts and how this all looks. Now we can also choose how many uh, we have in a column. So let's say we wanted to do all three in the same column. We would just go down here and choose three columns. And post per page, I would put this somewhere around 10 probably. And of course we only have three that we're working with right now, so that doesn't even matter. But as you add more blog posts, you know you, you probably want about 10 to appear on a page before they have to click through to the next page. Now I actually wanna go back to uh, classic, believe it or not. I think that's kind of my favorite overall look here. So. Uh, first thing we want to do, I want to give it a little bit more space between each of these. So we're going to go over to display options and we're going to increase the column spacing to whatever looks the best to us. I think probably about 20 pixels is going to look good. And then whatever we have there, we generally want to mirror that in row spacing. We can't see it because we don't have a second row, but you can kind of see here that it's going to give the same amount of space between. Now, what if we wanted to change what is shown here? Because honestly, it's kind of a lot of information that's not all necessary. I often don't recommend showing a date on a blog post because if someone finds it in two years, it automatically looks dated. So let's change what shows up here. I'm gonna go down to post options and you can choose if it shows any of your post content or not, like your first couple lines. You can turn that off if you want to, but I'll turn it back on. You can get rid of your author meta. So if you don't want to have the name of the author, that goes away. Get, uh, if you want to get rid of the date, that goes away. And if you're not really going to be having a lot of comments, you might want to turn that off as well. So comments, data gets taken off of it. So then all we're left with is the title of the post and then the category of the post. Because generally speaking, when you add a new post in WordPress, you want to give it a category. That just makes it easier for people to find what they're looking for. So I'm happy with this level of information being presented. So for now, let's go up to style. Let's really just kind of fix the look of this so it fits the rest of our site. So you could give an overlay to the images. I don't think that's really necessary. So when you, you know, hover over it, it does that. But I'm just going to clear it. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't think it's needed. Then if we want to change the our title uh, font or color or sizing or anything like that, we just click on title typography. I might make it slightly larger. maybe 20. Now I'll go to color and I'll use our accent blue. Now content box. What if we want to make this just pure white? So I'm going to go to background color, white. 
Now, but what if I wanna add a bit of a drop shadow behind these boxes? So we're gonna get rid of content box. We're just gonna to go to box. I'm not sure why it's split up that way, but a little confusing, but just stick with me here. So we're gonna go down to box shadow, turn this on. And now we've got a nice little subtle shadow behind it, and we can make it more subtle if you want by dragging this color over, just making it really nice and light. We could also do a border radius if you wanted to kind of round the edges out, which I think is a nice look. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So we've got each of our blog posts. And when you click on any one of these, it takes you to that actual post. So I'm happy with the look of this. I think we're ready to move on. But before we can, we have to click on update. So the next main thing we have to think about here is the header and the footer of the site. We need to make sure we get your logo in here. We need to make sure all our pages are represented and this is styled the way we want it. And we have to give a little love to this button up here because you may have noticed it does not match the rest of the look of the site. So we're just gonna go over, we're gonna click on preview changes. And from there, we have to go up to customize and click that. And before we go any further, I do wanna say that this particular template that we chose happens to have this type of menu on top where it's a, it's a white bar. But if you happen to have chosen one of the other ones where it has more of a transparent header, what I want you to do now is actually go and click the, the card at the top right of your screen right now. And I'm gonna take you to another video where I'm gonna show you how to finish up and customize your transparent header. But if you have one like this, you can stick with me and here we go. So we're gonna do a couple things. We're first gonna tackle the header followed by the footer. So let's go over to our right or left sidebar where it says header builder and click that. So we've got three different elements happening. We have the logo, we have the menu, and we have the button. So if you didn't want the button for whatever reason, you could just go down here and exit out. But I think it's always great to have a call to action button in the top right corner. Let's just go ahead and style it the way we want to though. So let's click on the little pencil icon and here's where you can change the text to match uh, the button on the rest of your site. In our case, it is exactly what we want it to be. Um, here, what we would do is we would just put in the web address for your booking page or your contact us page. And that would look like, just like that. And now we wanna look at the design. So we're gonna click over here on design and we're just gonna choose the background color by clicking here. And we're going to paste in the same color as our other button. Now. The thing is, since this is not done through Elementor, we don't have access to all those colors we saved. So you're gonna have to manually go back and make note of the color code and put it in there. And then the text color as well. So we want it to be white to match what we already have. And next, let's talk about our logo. So what you need to do is just click on the pencil icon right here. Okay, so this is actually text. This is just displaying your site title. So I'm going to just turn that off. And instead, I'm going to select a logo. So I'm just gonna click right here and select logo. And you would ideally have an image uh, for your logo that's wider than it is tall. It's saying here it recommends something about 180 by 60 pixels. So I'm just gonna choose this guy right here, click on select, and then skip cropping. And then you can see it's right up here. And then you can change the width of it if you'd like to make it as big or small as you want. Keep in mind, you, pr you probably don't want it that big and it's pixelated anyway. You wanna keep it somewhere around, you know, something like that looks pretty good to me. And next we wanna talk about our menu. So let's go ahead and click on the pencil icon right next to that. Now this is basically pulling from all the pages that we currently have, but let's say we wanted to get rid of contact us because technically this button takes care of that for us as long as you configured it that way. So what I wanna do is click on configure menu and it's the primary menu we're dealing with. So I'm just gonna click on edit menu. And if we wanna get rid of, it, of something, we just click on it and then click on remove. But remember we added the blog, but we don't have that here yet. So if we wanna add an item of a new page, we just click on add items and all the pages that you have are gonna be represented here. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign next to blog and then there it is. And if you wanted to rearrange stuff in different orders, you can just drag and drop into place just like so. Now I'm gonna click on publish to save our changes and we still wanna do a little bit of light customization on you know, the colors here if that's needed. So I'm gonna click on the menu again, and then go to design. And then we're gonna go down to menu color. So this is the normal state. This is the hover state when your mouse goes over it. And this is the active page state. So meaning on, we're on the blog page now, so blog is a different color than the rest. So you can make these different if you want to. If you wanna do a hover state um, using our 
kind of red color we have, we can do that. And we could do that on the active page as well. But that's completely up to you. It depends on the look you're after, but this way we can see it's all been accounted for. And before we finish up with the header though, we do want to make sure it looks good on mobile devices too. Super important. So what we want to do is go down to the very bottom where you can see these different uh, device icons. So let's click on mobile first. So obviously it can use a little bit of work here. So we're going to get rid of this, this text here. So let's click on our, I can't see what we're choosing here. If it's okay, it's the logo. Yeah. So we're just going to get rid of display site title. We're going to turn that off. Now we're going to look at our little toggle button here. Now it's not giving me any feedback on choosing it. So I'm just going to click on this element down here and now we get to edit it. So you can choose between these three icons, this one or this one or the three dots. I kind of like the three dots. I'll go with that. And then we're going to go over to design and the icon color actually refers to the actual three dots and the background color is, you guessed it, the background. So we're going to click that and we're going to give it our same red color and then we're going to give it our icon color. Uh, let's just make that white. And now let's go ahead and see what we've got. So if we click that, it opens up and it looks as expected. So I'm pretty happy with that. And we're just going to want to do the same thing on tablet as well. Looks pretty good, except for we still have this professional services text here. So I'm just going to say Display, display Site Title, turn it off. Okay, now I'm going to click on Publish and all of our changes should have been saved. So now we need to look at our footer. So I'm going to go back one more time and we're going to click now on Footer Builder. And let's just go back to our desktop view. Okay, so here's our footer and it also includes this like element that's above the footer and I'm not sure what it's for. So I'm just going to click here. Okay, so we basically have three levels of footer. This top one is empty. The second one is what we're looking at here. Then the third one deep is where this footer is. So all we need to do if we want to get rid of this guy up here, just exit out and it's gone and we're just left with this one. And I actually think this is a pretty good footer. So one element at a time, if we want to just click on the map, so if you want to change this to your own map, all you need to do is go over to text and you see all this code over here. Don't let that worry you. So you're just going to go to the web address that's on your screen right now. And from there, you're going to put in the name of your business or just your address. And then it's going to bring up a new map and you can, you know, change the width of it and stuff like that. And then just click on get code and then copy to clipboard. And then let's go back over here. I'm going to delete all of this and you'll just paste in the brand new code. There we go. And then if you wanted to change this text, you would just click on it, just click on the little pencil and then change the title over here and put in your address and your phone number. And then here we have a menu. So let's click on that. It's the primary menu repeated. If you wanted to do a secondary menu, you could do that. You could create a new menu, adding new pages you want to, but this website only has a few pages on it. So we're just going to go with repeating the primary menu. And now I'm going to click on publish and I'm gonna exit out of here. Now, there are a ton of really powerful next steps you could build into your new site, and I put together a really handy playlist showing you all your options. So just click right here for that playlist, and then just choose whatever piece you wanna focus on next, whether that's driving traffic to your new site, or adding a live chat feature, and lots more, I've got you covered. So just click right here, and I'll see you in a second.